Poker is a game of numbers and probabilities, in theory. In reality, I find it to be much more of an emotional game. I'm on bullet five. I'm on bullet five. You need to wreck all the chips. Now we have an overwhelming chip lead in Frankie C. So how did we end up here? It all starts a week ago. Chase your dreams or play it safe. For the past 24 years, I would have told you, chase your dreams. But now, I have a son to take care of. Why do I even want this so bad? I want to win a poker tournament. You see, I've always loved video games. I think Daniel Negreanu said it best. I'm just trying to level up. Let's switch the analogy. I want to hit for the cycle, but for poker. A World Series of Poker, World Poker Tour, European Poker Tour, and Asian Poker Tour title. And the Bowser of all poker tournaments has got to be Triton. I'm too young to play it safe. I'm at the Asian Poker Tour, and these are the events that I have planned this week. Each event acts as a warm-up for the next bigger buy-in, but the most important one to me is the main event. I hadn't played poker in two weeks, so I wanted to start with a smaller buy-in and work my way up. This is my first hand of poker I've played since Tony was born. And I'm all in. Literally pocket kings right off the rip. There's a raise, two calls, and I put my 25 big blinds all in. And I get snap called by the initial raiser. He probably thought I was full of shit since it was my first hand, but you also expect the call from the guy in the Gucci hat. Here comes a flop. I've heard a number of times you run better after having a baby, but the turn gives him outs. And the river's clean. We go from 30 to 75,000 chips in one hand. And then we open ace queen offsuit, a 16 big blind stack jams on the button, and we call. Pocket nines versus ace queen. We go from 50 50 to 25 75, and there's no help on the turn. We need a two, ace, or queen, and it's a jack of spades. So we go from 75k to 45k. And with the blinds going up, we have 11 big blinds. I look down at ace jack offsuit in the hijack, and there's an under the gun raise. I push all in. In, and the button goes ahead and re-jams all in. I know I'm behind. He has pocket queens. <sighs> Flop comes king three five. I turn, a gut shot, and the river, eight of spades. Now, he doesn't cover us, but he does leave us with less than one big blind. So, exactly one hand later, I look down at pocket jacks. Now with one big blind, it's not as exciting, but still, this is a great hand to get back into this tournament. This is the guy who just stacked me with pocket queens. So when I see him isolate raise me, I can't wait to flip over pocket jacks in his face. This is the super nuts with one big blind and he has queen 10 offsuit, perfect. Flop comes, ace, three, eight, turn, five of clubs. It gives him a flush draw and the river comes, the queen of hearts that's 650 bucks in less than two hours there's just so much you can't control playing poker tournaments i can still walk away and go back to the cash game tables but my dream <sighs> my dream's more important the next day i came ready there's three day ones for the main event and this is the first one i wanted to come at the start but i ended up working at home longer than i expected being a parent is exhausting I got there with 40 big blinds, which is plenty of chips. Table 12 and my lucky seat number two. I get to my seat and I hate my table. Sunglasses with a Team Pro patch, massive headphones, which annoy me because they never know what the hell the bet is. And this guy, who I just know is good from playing with him before. I totally asked for a table change right about now. Floor! All right, that was the quickest bullet of my life. Eight nine of diamonds, I raised under the gun, and the button tries to raise, thinking no one raised, but I did. So it's just a call. So he's gonna have a super wide range, small blind calls. And the flop comes, ace, 10, four, two diamonds. I bet both call, turn to seven. So we have a straight draw and a flush draw. I bet button calls. In the river comes the jack of diamonds. I hit my flush, and with about two thirds pot bet, I go all in, and he makes the call with queen five of diamond. So we go flush over flush. Two hands, really? All right, so I'm back in, and motherfucker, I'm at the same table. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I think I see one of my chips in there. I just want to stand up. I can't stand this guy. And he has way too many chips. 
Okay, I'm chill now. And I have ace queen, so let's do this. I raise someone called, and then he three bet me from the small blind. This guy. Oh, I just want a four bet jam on him. Well, Saner has prevailed. I just call, and so does the other guy. All right, let's flop him dead. Ace, ace, queen. Six, five, deuce, rainbow. He bets, and I have to fold. The next hand, I have ace, queen, offsuit again, facing an under the gun raise, and I just call. This is the shittiest premium. Our friend in the big blind calls as well. The raise to a flop, and that flop comes ace, jack, three with two clubs. We flop top pair, great kicker. The under the gun player continues with a small one thirds bet. We make the call, and the turn is a brick. He continues for 9,000, which is a third of our stack. I make the call. Hoping for a brick, no Broadway card. It comes the nine of hearts and he goes all in. $2,200 on the line. I make the call and he shows Ace King. I lost $4,400 today in two hours. Flush over flush and ace king versus ace queen. I finally understand what I'm really up against. Tournaments can eat you alive if you let them. But I ain't fucking leaving. I am fully committing to this dream of winning a main event. But wait. <laughs> Kitty has been the number one supporter of my dream, and today, we got a sitter, so she's coming to play as well. These tournaments have kicked my ass the past couple days, which is why I came here at noon, so I can play right when the tournament started. This time, my table was perfect. This reminded me of why you should come to poker tournaments on time, because that's when the softest players are there. And then the director comes and pulls me before my next big blind. I ask him if I could stay. He laughs at me and tells me I can't choose my seat. I quickly think, what if I get seated next to Kitty? And thankfully, I don't. This table doesn't seem nearly as fun. If we're going to win a poker tournament, we have to be able to beat good players. Came to the table with 32,000. And now I'm at 76,000. And then we hit a roadblock. The quickness. The quickness of a call is really important. I just got bluff caught. He called super quick on the turn. I double barreled and I shouldn't have. They call quick, give it up. I've hit that point, that invisible wall in a tournament where you just you start losing hands. I'm down to 55,000 chips, not where we want to be. I get tapped on my shoulder and Kitty was knocked out of the tournament. Although she seemed really excited to get home to see the baby. We're down a less than starting stack with eight six offsuit in the small blind. Not a place you want to be. This is a limp pot and the flop comes ace, nine, five with two spades. I start out with a one big blind bet. Our opponent who bluff caught us earlier calls again. The turn is an offsuit four. It kind of looks like we have more outs, but we don't. My default is to start blasting. I go 6,500 and again, he makes the call. I would love to get one past him. The river comes an offsuit king. But my only option is to bluff or just give up. You have to fight for every pot. I bet 12,000. But then he's thinking, why didn't I just go all in? I didn't want to be out if he called. I'm a bit more scared to run a big bluff when I'm on my third bullet. I think he caught on to exactly what the bet size was really meant to be. And he makes a call with queen nine. So third pair at this point. But it left me wondering, this game doesn't leave room for emotion like that. You can't be scared of getting knocked out of a tournament. Now with seven big blinds, it folds 12 in the button. We have five, four of spades. I make a disciplined fold. You need high cards if you're gonna get called. Poker in a way is a lot like baseball. If you make a mistake on the field, you have time to mull it over. I really have time to consider whether an all-in would have worked, but as I keep getting trash hands with my seven big blind stack. Now the big blind with six four of hearts, there's a button raise, and I have absolutely no fold equity. I truly don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I wanna see if I can flop a pair. I make the call, and the flop comes. Jack 10 10. I check fold and we're down to four big blinds. On the button, King 7 offsuit. I'm all in. The big blind snap calls with Ace 10 offsuit. I'm so down right now, my heart's not even sweating this flop. It's like I forgot that this hand is worth $2,200 and now he needs a jack. It doesn't feel quite as good when the doubles for a quarter of starting stack. Now with 10 bigs, I peel Queen Jack of Hearts. I jam in early position. And the button makes the call with a6 offsuit. Action here at Asia Poker Tour is great. We do need help. What the fuck? Such a needle. 
at this rate will be down over $20,000 in one week. I won't be able to hold on to my dream if this continues. I need to try harder. Pocket aces on my very first hand. A European player in the low jack raised, and I three bet him. He made the call. The first flop of the day. Queen, nine, queen. We started 40 big blinds deep. He checks, I bet one third. He check raises to 11,000, which is about 25% of our stack. My studying didn't teach me to fold aces, so I call. And the turn is the three of spades and he rips it. This is for $2,200. I'm not stoked about it, but how do I fold? I call. He shows king queen of diamonds. I know he has me covered since this is both of our first hands. I know I'm out. I can't get out of my seat. I feel cheated. I have to decide now if I'm going to quit or fully commit to this thing. I'm all on my own out here and I want to win even more now. I'm starting a war with this tournament one hand at a time. Play to my left raises to 2000. And you see the guy in front of me take a long, deliberate pause before making the call. The button calls as well, and I look down at pocket kings in the big blind. There's almost 10,000 in the middle and 40,000 in my stack. Come and get me. I'm all in. He re-jams all in. Was he trapping aces? Pocket sevens. Here we go. At this point, there's only one place left to go. Chips! And you won't believe who's sitting down to my left. Dusted off all your chips. Really? Yeah. Dusted them all off? <laughs> You'll see why this guy is important later in the story, but for now just know he won APT main event and his banner is sitting right next to us as a reminder to the whole table. There's only 18 minutes left of day one and making day two does not guarantee the money. I've built my stack up up to 50,000, but average is still 70. It would be huge to double up before day two. And they announced there's seven hands left. And here's our chance. I have pocket sixes in the small blind. There's an under the gun raise, a low jack call. I make the call in the small and so does the big. So we're four ways to a flop. And that flop comes nine, eight, six with two clubs. I check, the under the gun player bets 6,000. And the low jack player makes the call. And I only have one move to make. I'm all in. The guy who knocked us out before makes the fold in the big blind. And now the under the gun player goes into the tank. Is this the chance I have to double my stack and come into day two with a big stack? Or am I going home down $15,000? Low Jack flips over 9-8 of parts. I show my set, and under the gun shows pocket kings. We are in the best case situation. The turn comes a seven, and the river a queen. What an action flop. We just tripled up versus an over pair and two pair versus our set. 
So this is when the champ has a word. I know you were about to fall. I was going to say, go go. You got him behind. But you're not leading two people. One person maybe. I personally don't think this is the time to tell someone that they should have folded. But maybe they're good friends. And this is when he starts talking to me. I'm on bullet five. I'm on bullet five. Such a love box. Funny thing is, I'm actually on six. Jesus, I'm on that kind of spot. I haven't gotten that kind of spot in years. Ah, he comes so late onto the table and he gets a fucking triple out. I've been grinding the whole goddamn day. Oh, you've been grinding all day? I've been grinding all day since level three, I think. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I got that spot recently, sixes. The guy showed me nines. Pretty much the same work. So Wait for it. Keep the wreck all the chips. Did he just call me a recreational player? Did someone say B? Pocket kings? Nah. Pocket aces? Nah. Pocket sixes? That's my man. That's my boy. Let's go. <laughs> In event day two tomorrow, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go, Papa. Will my aces hold one time? Oh, will King King hold one time? I was willing to lose $15,000 in pursuit of winning this main event. This is officially the biggest tournament in Taiwan's history. $450,000 for first. I have $124,000 in my stack. I could still be knocked out before I make any money. I know what's at stake. Regardless, I'm going for the win. With around 45 big blinds, I get dealt pocket queens. With the blinds at 1k, 2k, I raise up to 4200 and the cutoff 3 bets me to 12000 with 40-ish, we could play it safe, go for a call. But I didn't put 13,000 in this tournament to play it safe. I go all in, and we're at risk for our last bullet, but he makes the fold. I was really feeling comfortable here, like the table leader. And then I'm the one that gets moved to a different one. The first big blind I play at the new table, I get dealt pocket kings. And I get a new subscriber at the same time. There's a hijack open to 4,000, and I re-raise to 16,500. And he makes the call. All right, dealer, give him something, but not something better than pocket kings. Eight, five, four, rainbow. Nice. He was a hand like pocket nines, tens, jacks, queens. I want to get the money in now. So I go for another big bet, 17,000 it is. And he re-raises me to 40,000. I only have 75,000 total, so that's committing myself. I push all in, he snap flicks it in, and I like the disgusted look already. He shows pocket queen. This is our moment in the tournament. Hold. You better hold, you piece of shit. Let's go. <laughs> this is our tournament. We have near 200,000 chips. This is a movie and I am the lead character. This is our moment to win a main event. With over 100 big blinds, I like to have an ace king. There's a 10 big blind jam under the gun. I just made the call, like I would with my very best hands and some weaker ones too. The small blind asks that just a call or a raise. So in a way I was trapping, but I wasn't trapping for 120,000 chips, 60 big blinds. I actually genuinely think about this one, like it has to be pocket jacks, pocket queens, or worse, but I make the call, and he shows. Ace, queen. Let's go! The other guy has pocket aids, but that's the least of my concerns right now. We're playing a 250,000 chip side pot, 120 big blinds. If I win this hand, not only will I secure a min cash, but I'll have one of the biggest stacks in the tournament. Come on! I couldn't even process the next 10 seconds. We lose most of our stack in a dominating situation. Tournaments one, Frankie zero. Actually, no, more like tournaments seven, Frankie zero. Man, this one hurts. So this is my current stack. 
And this is what my stack could have been, plus another 60,000. Poker giveth and taketh away. The climax is yet to come, boys. The climax is yet to come. So we're not doing great right now. We got about 25 big blinds. We get a spot with ace 10 offsuit. I raised to 5,000. The guy we doubled up calls and so does the big blind. So we have a spot to maybe make some of our chips back. And the flop comes ace, eight, six. I bet 9,000 and our nemesis is the only caller. The turn comes the deuce of diamonds. When he checks to me, I think he would have been 3-betting with ace-king, ace-queen, since he did go all-in for 70 big blinds with ace-queen before. I think I got the best hand. I go for a bet of 20,000 now. I'm hoping he calls, the river bricks, and I'll probably just check it down. Fuck, dude. All-in? What does he have? Ace-jack, ace-eight, ace-six, ace-two. I mean, I don't think he has a worse ace than me, and he's just going all-in just to be crazy and get the hand over with. He's either bluffing or has the best hand. Eight-seven of diamonds or maybe nine-seven suited only. I wish I never bet. I wish I checked. I really wish I checked. I fold, and this hand cripples me. You could call it fear, but I just didn't think I had the best hand, that's all. Now we're in jammer full territory, and with ace-queen, I'm jamming, and everyone's folding. Now on the button with queen 10 offsuit and 15 big blinds, we are all in once again. And they're not folding this time, he calls with ace jack offsuit. We haven't gotten it all in behind and actually won. Come on dealer, just give it to me. Okay, queen in the window, now we gotta hold, hold, hold. We're not at the 124k we started the day at, we are back up to 80. Poker tournaments truly do taketh and giveth at their own will. This Asian poker series has been like Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier, and I've taken a lot of punches this week. You have to be comfortable battling every single stack size. When you have a short stack, you just have to find your spots. A hundred more players need a bust before anyone makes the money and things aren't getting easier for us. Eventually our table breaks and we head to a new table with 15 big blunts. Even as I chip down, I never lose hope. There's a raise and I look down at pocket aces. They've hurt me before, but I'm a forgiving friend. I'm all in. Now if there's one underlying truth about playing poker in Asia, is that the players do not fold. Two red aces versus king queen offsuit. We are in a great spot. We're an 86% favorite. Come on. Queen, five, four. Not like this. Not like this. Not like this. Let's fucking go. We still have a very modest 80,000 chips. They started with 1,100. There's 225 left and 175 make the money. Only 174 people between us and that main event trophy. With only 15 big blinds, we can play it safe and try to squeeze our way into the money. Or we can go for the win. And I think you guys know my answer at this point. With 17 big blinds now, I raised king 8 offsuit in the cutoff. And I think king 9 is GTO approved, but this one is slightly too loose. And the small bind punishes us with a 3 bet. But now we are back down to 15 big blinds. We are 10 people away from making the money. Oh, don't give me pocket 7s with 15 big blinds. Oh. Raise folds, just fold, go all in. They all sound pretty terrible. If I go all in, it gives me the best chance to take down the blinds and it's most likely they're all just gonna fold. Why do you just ask for a count? Dealer lie to him, tell him it's 240. Tell him it's 260. Tell him he cannot afford this wager. <sighs> Button makes the call. He did just call a three bet out of position with jack seven of diamonds. So we have hope. This is actually okay. He could have ace king, ace queen, ace jack, and I'm going for the win, so I'd like to double up eventually. Let's just do it now with 10 people left to make the money. It's no sweat. Win a coin flip. I've done it a million times. Pocket nines. I really don't have to come home and tell Kitty that after playing for four days in a row, I didn't cash this tournament. For my son, you can't write me off yet. 4% of the time, I actually hit the 7 on the river. Nope. There's nothing comparable in cash in playing 4 days in a row and having $10,000 just wiped away in front of your eyes. Life's all about perspective. Yesterday, he thought I was running like the sun, but in reality, I was on my sixth bullet. When things aren't going your way, stop whatever storyline is running through your head like you're closing a book and open a new chapter, a new perspective of what could actually be happening. I am very lucky.
of the US of A. It is Frankie C. You know, like really, really lucky. This entire story is about to flip on its head. APT part two, Monday, March 25th, or right now if you're in the future. Boys, hearts fucking racing. Let's go!